Hello everyone and welcome to the third in this series of My Kite World Experience videos featuring in Kite World 111. This one is with Slingshot team manager Sam Light, who is one of the most well-rounded and stylish twin tip riders in the sport. When it comes to wake style riding, Sam 31 is as successful as they come, with four Triple S titles and two Kite Park League championships to his name. Along with fellow English chargers Tom Court, James Boulding and Aaron Hadlow, he was part of the infamous UK crew who made the Freeride Project video series in 2012, which contributed heavy influence over the development of today's boots riding world tour freestyle scene. As well as arguably being kiteboarding's best cable crossover rider, Sam also has a Red Bull King of the Air medal from 2013. His broad twin tip skills come from an incredible technical ability to understand the mechanics of difficult and risky manoeuvres. So where does he find enjoyment in foiling? Surely an altogether more pedestrian activity. We'll find out in this video with Sam, which largely focuses on his solo, unaided, 73 mile circumnavigation around the Isle of Wight in 2020. Hey Jim, yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm in sunny Hailing Island, as you can see behind me, the palm trees are blowing in the wind and you might even be able to hear the waves in the background. I live right on the beach. You must be doing well for yourself. <laughs> for me, in terms of your riding, there's always an element of risk, like the wake style tricks that you do are very powered. If they go wrong, they hurt. Riding a slide yeah. in the way that you do is very risky. I mean, some of the gaps that you do are incredible. Massive kite loops again, and it just seems to me like foiling has this massive disconnect. So do you think that's right? Yeah. And where is the enjoyment for foil in foiling for you? The big thing for me about foiling is that you can progress without having so much commitment, both mental and physical, you know, to, to be at the top of your game, to do park or freestyle or big air. There's a huge amount of commitment. Um, freestyle is, is extremely physically demanding. You have to keep in really good shape. Um, and big air, you know, is, is kind of all about, you know, the mentally demanding in some ways, because you have to be so 100% committed to every move. Um, and what I loved about foiling is that I could still get that feeling of progression without, you know, really exerting myself. Um, and it was just slowly ticking away. I do a lot of skateboarding and I actually think it's really similar to skateboarding in some ways is that you just have to keep going. It gives me hope that you find certain things difficult because you said that you were learning or you, or you weren't posting so many videos about it. And then suddenly when you were, I was like, whoa, when did Sam start foiling? Because you just suddenly had all these moves. Um, what yeah. did you, what well, did right you find? Right from the start, right from the start, I knew that it was going to be huge. Like, I just could tell that it was so accessible. It opened up these massive range of conditions. It's once in a blue moon that it's really good for, for doing handle passes or even big air. So, but I could foil every day, which was really, really cool. It's quite the view. What I wanted to talk about, about the Isle of Wight navigation is what came first? You've grown up on Hailing Island, so you pretty much stare at the Isle of Wight every time you go to the beach. Was it always something you wanted to do or was it since you started foiling and realised this is a machine that can go upwind like nothing else? Is that when the challenge came into your mind? I've always taken an interest in the Isle of Wight, just, yeah, growing up on hailing, um, you know, having access to, like, my dad's got a rib, you know, we used to go over across in the rib for lunch occasionally and, and did the odd sailing trip. I actually did the round the island sailing um, race when I was, like, 10 years old, and I did it for the first time last oh, weekend wow. in, in my own boat. Um, yeah, so that was, that was really fun. But, yeah, I've always been aware of that race. Um, and the distance and yeah it, the kind of penny was dropping as i got better at kite foiling i started using a gps watch and kind of trying to quantify my sessions to see how fast i could go and then kind of started doing the maths in my head okay so i'm what i'm averaging 20 miles an hour like i could i could go quite a, a long way in in five hours so i started to like set myself little missions because in the solent where i live you've got the isle of wight it's a big protected area with like tons of boys and forts and stuff so I would go like maybe a couple of miles around a fort by myself um, and I love that feeling of like you know nothing should go wrong but if something does go wrong you're you're quite exposed so slowly pushed it further and further and then I did the nab tower by myself which is 13 miles straight out to sea 
um, and that took about 40 minutes each way, which isn't that long, but when you're out there by yourself and you're 14 miles out, so you can barely see the land. Um, yeah, I just, I don't know why. I just, yeah, sort of fed off that feeling. Um, and was thinking about the Isle of Wight for a long time. It was actually quite off the cuff, honestly, just, I'd been vlogging for like six months at the time. Yeah, it was two years ago now I did it and just, just called up Tom Court and recorded it and was like, hey, dude, let's do it today. I'm, I'm going to do it. I had been like looking at forecasts and learning about the tides and starting to make preparations to do it. Um, and it just fell into place that day. The tides looked good. So I uh, yeah, once Tom was on board, it helped give us the motivation to go for it. Um, so you did one with Tom and then and then you did another one in almost half the time. So obviously Tom's, yeah. Tom was a bit of an anchor for you, was he? <laughs> he was a bit slow, to be honest. <laughs> but yeah, he was he was a bit slow that first time. But we took our time. We said yeah. we weren't trying to to break any records or even go fast. We also stopped at Hearst Castle, which is was about halfway for us for about an hour and had some had a drink and some food and stuff. Um, and then we went up to the needles and we spent probably half an hour like kiting around the needles because uh, I'd never kited there before. And it was ideal conditions, getting some shots. And we had Tom's friend um, on, on the cliffs taking some pictures of us and stuff. So, yeah, we did it in five hours, 45 minutes the, the first time. Um, and we got the tides quite wrong as well. Um, we had a long, long stretch around St. Catherine's Point, which is one of the most treacherous parts right. of it was like really strong wind over tide um yeah 25 knots of wind was so overpowered and just it was really hard work making headway um but yeah i finished it i knew i could do it better and this feeling of yeah being sort of exposed and conquering feats like this kind of i guess was was growing in me a bit and then um yeah i, I bought a, a little cruising yacht during covid to, to start trying to use it to do more of these missions um and yeah went for it basically I, I sailed my boat to Hearst Castle which is a great place to start the rounding and yeah I, I was with a friend and then left him on the boat and just went did it and did it in three hours 45 minutes um and and since sailing around the Isle of Wight and, and learning more about it I got the tides much better still not perfect I think I could still do it faster um but that was way more intense by yourself I set off at eight in the morning and it was, yeah, 25 knots of wind just out in the needles. It was so gloomy just by yourself, you know, like a couple of miles offshore. Um, so, yeah, I don't know why. I just get, yeah, I love that feeling. It was a great video. Really, really exciting. I mean, how, how difficult was it? Three hours, 27 minutes. You did 75 miles. I think, I think you say that's yeah. 100, 120 kilometers. Um, I mean, foiling sometimes when you're trying to go fast, it's pretty hard on your legs. You know, you have to physically exert yourself yeah. to, to work hard at foiling. When you're trying to go fast for a long period of time, it's um, it's pretty hard, isn't it? How, how physically difficult yeah. was it? Yeah, it was. It was really, yeah, physically difficult. But also there was no chance of me like struggling with it. I guess um, freestyle and big air and wakeboarding is is quite physical there's a lot of squatting and things like that which does like translate like that power in your legs doing freestyle and big air translates to pushing on a foil and balancing um and i i was kind of training for it loosely you know i was setting you know i would go for a, i wouldn't just go for a meander of a foil you know in this like last summer i'd be like you know spending 45 minutes going upwind as fast as i could and seeing how my legs felt um so there was definitely some preparation done for it. Um, and then you just need, yeah, plenty of water, all the right food and some music, basically. And then, you, then you're fine. <laughs> I set off at eight in the morning because the tides were most favourable then. And it was just very gloomy. And, you know, I kind of had a little bit of doubt. Like, Am I doing the right thing? Is this silly? You know, like the first time we had a sort of a bit of safety boat support, like Tom's dad was in his rib. My dad was in uh, his rib. But that time, you know, I did actually have a lot of safety stuff. I, I, I have like a proper GPS tracker and my phone. Um, you know, people knew what I was doing. So I was I was pretty safe. But yeah, that first hour when I was really struggling to make headway and yeah, I was just kind of doubting myself whether I was doing the right thing. 
the needles in particular is just just quite kind of daunting because there's massive like you know white steep cliffs that stick out of the ocean and there was also huge standing waves there as well so once I got around the needles and I was heading on a nice reach across the back side of the Isle of Wight I kind of calmed down a bit and, and knew I was I was going to be okay but yeah that first hour was pretty stressful I think for, you know like anything when you do it it's something yourself it's it's a lot more intense yeah um then then kind of sharing you know almost sharing the burden with somebody else it's like you're in it together with somebody else but yeah when you're by yourself it, it's all on you the potential is infinite somewhat and yeah i've been doing loads of research actually i've, I've got a few things in the pipeline um just more islands and that's why i kind of want to start using the boat more um you know to sail to an island and then kite around it you know like literally launch off the back of the boat and and kite around an island which and it's just cool doing stuff that kind of you know hasn't hasn't been done um which that's kind of yeah my new my new thing at the moment i'm really enjoying that that aspect of it the exploratory side of it because it's really fun you know going places and using these crafts that you wouldn't otherwise be able to to access these areas so finishing it off then sam big question it's friday afternoon it's 20 knots well it is here it's I didn't I don't think so I thought it was like 12 15 knots I was going to ask you it's 20 knots what discipline are you going to do this afternoon but with you it sounds like it's only 12 so it's got to be kite (laughs) (laughs) well I guess you know that really depends on the conditions um and that's what I, I I love about hailing and that's kind of how you have to make the most of it you know if if the sandbar was out and there was flat water then I'd be grabbing a tip twin tip if there was some some kickers maybe um you know i'd be chucking the bindings on if there was a bit more wind i'd I'd probably be using straps um if there was less wind i would be um kite foiling and yeah if it was super strong wind with big waves i'd I'd be winging which is is happening more often than not at the moment um so yeah i've always been one for choosing the best discipline depending on their conditions to to get the most out of it so uh it'll probably be a cruisy kite foil for me today i think <laughs> all right sam brilliant thanks for doing this it's been great talking to yeah, you yeah thank you likewise